guys, this is Paula from Way Out Radio and you're watching the very first official unwrapping for Way Out Radio of the Classical Collection. Look at that beast. Yes, very excited. Thank you very much to One Little Independent Records for sending this down. Um, really excited to get my hands on these. I've been listening to them a lot, um, even though these ones are, un are not unwrapped yet because I'm going to unwrap them now. But yeah, amazing stuff, and uh, the artwork has been redone by G, so I'm just putting it together like a puzzle right now. And uh, yeah, it's amazing to see what she's done with this. So if you don't know, Crass are an amazing anarcho-punk band formed 1977, originally by Steve Ignorant and Penny Rambo. And uh, I mean, I'm sure you're a fan anyway, so you know the, the drill, but they caused a storm, they've influenced um, a lot of people, and um, they touched on a lot of things like speaking about feminism, vegetarianism, veganism, animal rights. Um, they were against anti, like, anti war, nuclear disarmament, and uh, they're just a really important band and they remain very important now. Stop the City Marches, um, they did a very early version of that back in the 80s, and uh, they went on to influence myriads of bands, like from, you know, Bob Villain, the new. Um, new punk guy coming up to Slaves and of course back to like Flux of Pink Indians and of course like Conflict so just an amazing band um, well worth checking out if you don't know about them but yeah I mean I'm a massive fan anyway so first of all I'm just going to show you this this is uh, most of my crass collection these are the albums I've got so I've got every single record um, which I've collected uh, since I mean, they go back to the 70s and 80s, and um, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite young, I was born in 92, so I uh, did a lot of eBay shopping and record shopping and collecting, and then also I've got, like, all the remasters, um, which they've recently released, like last year, so this is um, Crass Records remaster there, I've got all of these Abbey Road remasters, so I've got pretty much everything you could want <laughs> by Crass. So of course, uh, the big question is with this new CD collection, um, why is it time for the band to reissue these and um, is there a point to it? So yes, I can answer that. There's definitely a point. Firstly, the original tapes were disintegrating and then um, Penny and the band were really worried about the fact that we could lose this music forever and and we might not be able to do this at a later date. So it was essential that the band um, went back into, this, into the studio and fixed up the old masters and um, got this all done digitally and could share it with future generations. Because of course, um, at the time, they did all their recording was DIY and they Penny produced a lot of the stuff and so it was all like very punk and um, there was no like professional sort of record label like telling them oh you need to put these in an ice tank and save them preserve them for the future or any of that madness so it's just a bunch of guys looking after some old reels I think so uh, it's really good that they've saved them and of course it's really nice to have them on CD as well because they've never been released like this before. Okay, so I'm going to get into it. First of all, this is the big one, Classical Collection, new artwork by G. Borcha, um, who's incredible. She works with Banksy. She's inspired so many people. She's an amazing artist. Um, the second reason why it's essential for this collection to be like preserved and... Um, reissued is because this isn't just like a normal reissue um i've done a lot of work for viva the rock magazine as the reviews editor and i get re reissues every single week like um you know loads and loads of bands uk subs ruts uh, buzzcocks clash like every band you can imagine like in the punk scene and beyond are always like reissuing their retro material which is brilliant and i love that and i love collecting all of that stuff but um it's great to know that there's something new and something different rather than just like the remastering is slightly different and hard to even notice. Uh, this is like an absolutely entirely new listening experience. It's just all encompassing sound, like the panning, the stereo is just insane. Um, it's almost like sitting and listening to like a punk rock 
theatre production audio. It's like, you know, you've got all these different cut up, cut up pieces from TV and radio, and you've got all these different voices coming in, Steve Ignorant, the other people in the band, Eve Libertine, Feel Free, everybody just like chipping in, Penny Ramble with his pots and pans. And um, it's just like a totally incredible experience to just sit back and hear it all in stereo, like fully clear uh, for the first time. I honestly have to say I was completely blown away by uh, the remastering of this collection and I'm just so proud of the band and happy that they've put this together and done this because it's just like, for a fan, it just means the world. So, uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's my opinion anyway. All right, so let's have a look at this loads of stuff in here as you can see with the records i showed you earlier they pour they their artwork is meant to be poured over so here we've got this beautiful little poster with all of the lyrics look at that absolutely amazing that is so incredible to have this picture because i've been looking at it online and uh, you can't really get a good quality of it. So you've got the full shebang there. You can have a really good look at it and it's absolutely perfect condition to just check out every single bit of the picture. Really amazing. So yeah, first piece. Nagasaki Nightmare. Just all of the artwork newspaper clippings, all of the lyrics, everything is here. Everything to be looked over all over again by hardcore fans. Absolutely incredible. Reality Asylum, amazing. Really, really like impressed with this. And you can just see how they've kept the ethos that's run through the band from day one, which is just, it's DIY and it's original and they've spent hours painstakingly putting all of these together. Like G is an incredible artist. All of the collages, paintings, everything she's done. All the lyrics done by all of the band. This one's pink. I really like this one, it's really cool. It's done just as it would have been back in 77 or in the 80s it's just like they've kept with the original formula which is uh, really important so it looks a bit joy divisionist doesn't it this one's like black it's got the logo on welcome home a lot of war posters anti-war messages um you know you got to wonder how many young people were saved from joining the army because of crafts. I mean, there were a lot of lost kids back then and there was a war going on. And uh, so thanks to crafts for turning people against joining the army. And also a lot of people turned vegetarian because of this ban. Just informing people about the cruelty to animals and how it was unnecessary and how you could live a life without being part of that and being part of the system is really, it spoke to a lot of people and it changed a lot of people's lives. There's another book here. And this is just amazing. It's got loads to read, loads of things to catch up on. Pictures, color pictures. This is really beautiful the way they've put this together. We've spent a lot of time on it. We've got newspaper clippings about the band. It's really incredible. <laughs> Amazing. So that is absolutely beautiful. Next one. Stations of the Crass. I just don't even want to open it, but obviously it's mine, so... I do want to open it. It's beautiful. We've got two CDs in this one. We've got 
John Peel sessions, live at the Pied Ball, Stations of the Crass. Oh, we've got, yeah, a double album hit. Whoa, that is amazing. It, that is an amazing photo of the band there in their little van. They must have suffered so hard, like getting from town to town on, in this van. And I know that Steve wrote about it in his book that they really like did it DIY. There were no hotels on these tours. It was sleeping in the van or it was sleeping on someone's floor. So that's an amazing photo. I've never seen that before. Really happy with that. And they're all in black. So they're obviously ready to go to a show. I know they used to wear black all the time because it was easier to wash the clothes like that. And uh, it just gave them a really strong image. Really nice image there. And we've got a black CD there. Really cool. And I've got another book here, which is, oh, I'm gonna be busy. Uh, yeah, crass. My takes on mistakes and piss takes. Uh, I've got some a letter written by Steve and some drawings of coppers. This is amazing. Really striking images. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy reading this. And I like uh, the colouring as well. It goes white, red and black throughout the book. So here we got this page is black. Nice red cover there. It's just beautifully put together. I love the graphic design. Amazing. <laughs> so lucky to do this. Okay. Um, feeding of the 5,000. more oh look at that see because one of the things i was concerned about when i saw the new artwork was that it all joins up to make one big crass symbol so i sort of you can only tell what album you're looking at by it's written in small print on the front um so you're missing out on the original artwork which is like the original artwork is incredible so never fear straight away the first thing you see when you open this package is Feeding of the 5,000 cover, exactly as it was as the back from back in the day. And even when you open it, it's like exactly a mini version of the original, the way it was folded and everything. That's really thoughtful. It's, they've obviously like made sure everything is like perfect. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got Feed Another 5,000 there. Ah, oh, I'm loving these photos. Look at this one, a penny. That is just excellent. That's a really nice shot. And another book as well. I'm gonna be busy. Yeah, just like loads and loads of literature for you to just, you know, spend years just dipping in and out of really, really cool stuff. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan, but there's a lot of this stuff I haven't seen before. Like, this art is amazing. And look at the lyrics there. Just like fading, fading away, fading into focus. Really clever. It's like a poetry book. Yes, very impressed so far. Right, let's do... Let's do Penis MV, yeah. This is my favourite album of all time. Just spent many, many hours riding my bike to work, listening to this album on my headphones and just loving the lyrical content and the whole message behind it one of the first feminist albums to be released i think it was in 81 yep yeah. 
it's just as it was. Pretty nice. Yeah, that's a great photo. Okay, and then hold another book. Really beautiful stuff here. One God, one church, one husband, one wife. Excellent. Let's see what photo we've got in here then. This is better than like Christmas cracker. But yeah, crass on stage. See the banners behind them they made their own banners out of bed sheets and decorated the halls that they played they usually just hired out halls because it was better than dealing with promoters and proper venues and stuff then you just hire your own town hall and you can charge what you want on the door and you can serve food and give out fanzines and they just made the place their own really awesome stuff excellent all right Let's go with Yes Sir I Will, another classic. Um, against the Falklands War, there's a picture of, I think, a soldier who's had his face burnt off. And uh, Prince Charles, I think, is um, shaking his hand and saying, get well soon. And the man says, yes, sir, I will. And uh, that just shows the hypocrisy and madness of uh, war and how he's obviously not gonna get better. But he just said he would <laughs> because he was faced with the royal family. Very disturbing, really. Incredible book here. Um, they've just spent so much time. I mean, like, this isn't as much a CD collection and music collection and back catalogue as it is a book collection. Everything's in here. The lyrics written over old images of war. This is a really cool touch. Who is the slayer and who is the victim? Speak. Yeah, and of course, there is no authority but yourself. And I've got a crass t-shirt on at the moment. Fight war, not war. Destroy power, not people. I'll just show you the booklet of that which you should know well. And there's the image there. Amazing. Okay, and that's the image inside the cover. Loads of uh, Union Jacks being flown and then a man uh, at war, falling in the barbed wire. <clears throat> this is like trench warfare. So, it's cool. Right, we've got two more to go. Let's do Christ the Album and then 10 Notes on the Summer's Day. Really cool stuff. So this one is plain white and it's a different different piece of paper. Oh, it's folded, it's the same size piece of paper but no images whatsoever on it. But then you do get a poster on the other side, which is incredible. An institution is the length and shadow of one person. Got Maggie Thatcher in the middle there with her ass out. <laughs> a lot of awesome images collaged together here. Really cool. Okay, and then another book. A 
Future of Belfast. Writings from Steve Ignorant. A lot of uh, writings from Penny. And all of the lyrics included. Yeah, really cool. Nice. And here's the CD. I've got a bit of a different image here. Nice nighttime image of a person standing alone under a lamppost. Cool. All right. And final one. I'm looking forward to playing all these later and uh, looking and reading all of this content and artwork and just a massive collection of goodies. Okay, so again, we've got um, a blank. One side is blank and it folds out like, just like the other pieces do. And then, ah, oh, completely different from everything else we've seen. Summer's Day. This is the Swan Song album, apparently. There's an image here of cobble pavement with some tracks for a tram. And a cat. <laughs> so that's a bit different. This is their last album, and uh, many of the original members of Crass didn't feature on this. I think it was mainly directed by Penny, and it includes a lot of avant garde and jazz. But of course, uh, Penny is still um, an anarchist with the same ideology and mentality, and um, the band is bigger than the sum of its parts, so this is rightfully part of the collection and uh, of course you should still listen to these guys because they know what they're talking about. <laughs> Another amazing book here. Really cool. And there's the uh, cover as well. Alright, let's get all this back into frame. All this stuff, I've got to put it back now. <laughs> so, a massive thanks to One Little Independent Records, a huge thanks to Crass. Um, you've been watching Way Out Radio. My name is DJ Paula Frost, and uh, I'm a huge Crass fan. So, yeah, send us a comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. And um, if you're a Crass fan, then please go to wayoutradio.com slash shop, where you can get my dissertation, which I wrote on the band, um, it's absolutely free. You can make a donation if you like, which is um, always gratefully received and goes towards my community radio show that I put out every week, which is punk and reggae music. Um, but yeah, it's wayoutradio.com for the free dissertation. I wrote it all about the song Big A, Little A and Crass's contextualisation in the economic climate and social climate of uh, the early 80s. And uh, yeah, I'm over the moon with this collection and... Uh, I'm going to sign off now, so thanks very much, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. DJ Paula Frost here from Way Out Radio, the one and only punk and reggae station broadcasting every week. Go to wayoutradio.com for more. So I just want to tell you guys about the brand new fan club we've just launched. It's absolutely amazing. You can choose from contributing £5, £10 or £20 per month to keep the station alive, pay our guests handsomely and keep music money in the musician's pocket and in the punk world and in the reggae world. So find out more about that at wayoutradio.com. Thank you very much.